Welcome to A Beautiful Life. I'm Sonia Shin, your host. I'm a health journalist and a certified performance coach. And today I'm super excited to be chatting with one of my favorite people on the planet, my friend, uh, Sonia Day Slankard. She is an artist in residence for Thomas Dunn Learning Center in St. Louis, Missouri. And today we're going to talk about watercolors because I tend to work with clients that have work in very like high stress, high stakes fields and I personally find that working with watercolors is such an amazing way to just relax, unwind, de-stress, decompress, and learn to let go, like let go of all that like tension of the workday. So Sonia Day, thank you so much for joining me today. It's so good to see you. Oh, it is my great pleasure to just share some time with you. So what are some basics? So um with working with watercolors, like what are what are some things that we need to get started? Okay, super simple. Water, water in a cup, plain water, right? Got my water. Um, water, uh, watercolor paints, right? And I got the cheap little tin here. This is one of my favorite things. I bought it for a dollar, and it's got um, neons, beautiful colors, right? So, a lot of times people think that you know. Like, have to be expensive, but you can buy these types of creative tools at the dollar store. So awesome. So I have some really lovely watercolors, these Japanese ones, but does it make a difference? I've also got like some Windsor Newtons. How big of a difference, like if you get something at the dollar store versus these, like, do you have to have something like this or? Yeah, that's what? a great question because I like to talk about art being more accessible, right? And it really is. And I have found through experiments that the the cheap paint, you just have to put a lot more on or use more water than the more expensive paint. Now the more expensive paint is gonna go on like really opaque and be really beautiful and very rich and velvety. You can tell a difference, but as far as like, enjoying the act of doing watercolor, it doesn't have to cost a lot. I do a lot with like little kids and like in kindergarten level. So we wanna be able to hand them something like this dollar palette that they can totally destroy. And, uh, or, you know, I've got like this beautiful palette. I ordered, this was one of my first things I ever ordered on the marketplace. And it's a really nice travel palette. That's got a lot of colors. And um, this one is set up so that it like, oh, I just love it. Um, you can take it anywhere you want to go. So it's a travel palette. That's what, you know, that just means I can go watercolor anywhere. So yeah, I do have this little yeah. Windsor Newton that I have carried with me for decades. I have taken this to Central Park when I was working like with NBC Network News, I would take this over to Central Park and just paint. I've taken this all over the country. And um, I love like that there's like a little water bottle in here, a tiny mm -hmm. little nice. brush. Yeah, Windsor and, Newton is a great brand and they're just going to have really enriched colors, right? Yeah. However, you know, just for like, let's just play this $1 palette that I got. Um, as long as you like really charge it up with a lot of with liquid and like stir it, okay. you can get really rich colors out of it too. And the beautiful thing about watercolor is it's translucent, right? That's kind of in its nature to be a little washy and a little watery. So using a cheap palette, using the most expensive palette, um, you can still get that, that brain connection, like release and the joy from it. So yeah, we want yeah. I do have a friend that was saying, I don't have the money right now. And I was like, you don't have to. I grew up with very little money and you know, we always had plenty of art supplies. My dad was a science teacher and an artist. And so we were always well stocked in art supplies. That's the nice thing about art supplies is that yeah. it doesn't, you can, you can up level and then, you know, as you grow up, like buy the really fancy stuff, but then you don't have to. Um, now, what about paper? Like I have a, no, that's good. Like a that's mixed a good media question. notebook with some really like thick paper. Mm -hmm. um, tell me, what do we need for paper? Well, because it's the nature of like actually putting water and making it wet, a thicker paper is going to work better. I've had like fun results playing with just computer paper and watercolor paint. So you have it there, right? I also like love to watercolor paint on junk mail or letters or oh, oh. repurpose a book page or something. Mixing like water. art envelopes. Absolutely, absolutely envelopes like like the ones that have the like the pre postage stamp on it. Just paint on it and send it back to them. <laughs> that's so cool. That's such a great idea. I love that. So that's the beauty. But if you get really want to make a nice watercolor, you would get actual watercolor paper that's a little thicker. 
I just found this cute set of watercolor postcards and that's what I'm gonna do a little demo on today. This actually has a postcard stamped on the back, but it's a thick watercolor paper. Yeah. Does it absorb I do have like a watercolor, like where it's got designs and it's oh, super yeah. thick watercolor paper. So it yeah. kind of takes your coloring to the next level. Yeah, like, or like if the, with like printer paper, it just soaks in. And mm -hmm. to me, I also, I think that's beautiful. I'm gonna reach and find one I have right here. Like, this is maybe one that somebody did. I'll put it right here in front of the camera. Like, can you see that? Uh, I'll try to get my angles right. Uh, it's just nice. really washy, but look how beautiful. And yeah. this is just the cheap $1 sketchbook, really thin paper. Uh, mm -hmm. It makes it, you know, you can almost see through it, but I think that's beautiful if you wanna like put an affirmation on it and hang it in your window. Right. Yeah. So this is, and this is just playful. This is just, I, I didn't paint this, somebody else did, but it was in my collection. It's the magic. Isn't that precious? That's but lovely. this is just playful, right? Someone spent yeah. some time just playing with colors, just really going with the flow to create this on super cheap paper. <laughs> now let's talk about brushes. So, you know, I have some like, you know, really fancy, like sable brushes. <laughs> I've had these for a long time. I think I've had these for decades. So they're a little, but I do like this big fat one for washing, putting down yeah, the exactly. wash. This um, one is a good one. Anything like this with its natural bristles are the very best. Anything that's okay. made with like actual hair or natural bristles, but you can really use anything. Now this is just like the cheapest paintbrush you can possibly find, but it is excellent for loading the paper with water. Okay. Um, if it, you know, I, and then the brush, little brush that you get with your watercolor kit, this little old plastic guy that's got like these weird nylon bristles really is like, I got to learn this camera here with the thing. We'll, we'll get that. <laughs> it's a mind bender. <laughs> get that. This, is, this is totally mind bending. This is my washi brush. <laughs> your wa wash? I call it my wash brush because I dip it in water and then paint. Okay. Get but what about so we have the natural hair do you have to spend a lot of money on these like fancy Not natural because these are inexpensive but this is more like a i don't know i what have a set of these that i love oh, gosh. this was one of my big treats and i bought it at michael's for like five dollars it was yeah. a, such a huge treat but it is holds water in it yeah. so water inside and then um this is super easy to travel with you squeeze it and you squeeze it into the in into the palette and the water comes out, right? I yeah. have had some like problems with these though, because like, here's this one. I Now the water is green, but <laughs> so I like, we'll have to specifically- The joy of art. Use green paint with this one, but it's easy to take it off, rinse it out, wash your bristles. These nylon bristles, they clean out really well. So they're good to reuse again and again and again. Now this one, just because I used it the other day and it, I used it painting a lot of green, it sort of soaked up the green into the water. And that's something that, well, you know, now I'm just gonna have to use this to paint green things. <laughs> we just have a few minutes. So I wanna go ahead and like show a little bit. You said you're gonna show us through like the wet, wet on wet technique. Yes, so, we're going to talk a little bit of technique, and what that's we, a good basic part to play. We, I love our brushes. A good real hair brush works great. Okay. And um, to make it, let me get this closer to me. Let me get this angle just right. We're going to just practice a dry technique. So get your brush wet, and then get pick up a color, something okay. you know, something bold, so you can play with it, right? Okay. Um, for our first, just pick up some whatever color you want to play with. I okay. like. I always recommend you wait and go save black for later. But with this technique, we're just going to experiment with drawing. I wish you could see that. Um, load your brush up with, let me maybe try to do this. Mm -hmm. Wet brush and just stir it around a little bit in a dark color. So let me get this closer to me there. This makes more sense. Water in there, get it all juicy, and then okay. just paint like so just give it any line you want and that's just we're just gonna this is basic painting like drawing with paper right so okay. put a couple lines very easy you want to rinse your brush okay. then bring a wet brush back over to what you just painted and experiment with drawing that away and like what it would look like to then like that's the beauty of watercolor right we're just gonna i'm not gonna get any more paint i'm just gonna get some water and i'm gonna put water on it and then play with pulling 
anyway, like that. See how exciting I maybe even like draw a wet line across it and watch the colors bleed together, right? Take a, a clean, clear brush and just paint across whatever you just painted and then see how the, this is where it gets to that place where it's really juicy. When you look up close to what you're doing and like allow the water to move the paint and pay close attention to the gradients of the color and the way it blends, right? You've got to turn in your artist eye to notice in the details. And when you're like, when I watercolor, I kind of get up close to it and like stare at it. And then we'll make a little move and then watch the paint kind of do its thing naturally. That's how you get centered into that place while you're doing it. That's where you get yeah, to the so point. relaxing. Mm -hmm. Just like watching it move is like amazing. And then it's like, they love the gradation and, mm -hmm. um, and how like how simple that was. So now we're gonna, we did that. Now I wanna play with just a wet on wet. So take, okay. get your brush wet and get your whole paper wet, right? So clean wet brush, draw it across the whole paper. So your paper itself is wet, right? Then let's go pick up a color again with a, a nice wet brush. I'm gonna do red this time so you really see it. Um, and load your brush up with color. That means sometimes um, really stirring it, right? So with a wet brush, you go onto your paint palette and give it a nice stir and then you'll see that your brush is like loaded up with rich color and then just put a dot on your paper and see what happens. A dot and watch it spread out like crazy with your wet paper. Mm, yours is gonna drip real nicely. If you can say, put a couple dots on it and kind of watch what they do, maybe grab another color that will go with that. And then play with putting some dots. Should the brush be really wet or is it mostly like just a little bit wet or um, how much wet should the brush be? So many millions of variations, but a wet brush picks up a lot more color. So the wet okay. brush will like, you put your wet brush, you stir up your little color palette and you give it a really good, good stir with a wet brush. And then your brush is going to be loaded up with color and you can just put little dots and watch them expand. This one's going really well. This one's really beautiful. This is so fun. Okay, so, and then these these little experiments. Oh, this now I'm looking at it like, oh, this is just a little pond of goldfish, right? <laughs> I didn't really mean to paint that, but now that I'm staring at it and like watching the color, sometimes I'll just like see this big puddle, like put some paint in it and then watch it just sort of swirl around and move around. And that's where the magic of watercolor is, is like allowing the water to do its thing, right? This yes. is a part of kind of like the surrender to uh, the process over the product, right? Yeah. So surrendering to the process and allowing the water to move and do its thing gives you some kind of like, there's no way to necessarily control that. The <laughs> water's yeah. gonna flow or it's gonna flow. Now, once you get really good at it, you can start to decide, but I'm in the experiment mode. So I'll like play with it and just like get a really wet paper and move it around. Is that, all right, watch that, watch it drip. Ooh, I love it. That's my game. Or sometimes I like to like get a nice little puddle, add a bunch of color to it and then like splatter or like add a bunch of color to it like that and then give it a blow like that. Do you see that? <laughs> if I love it's a it. really big puddle and you go, just give it a little like blast of air it can do something spontaneous like that that's fantastic and that's, and that's this little spontaneous page I mean you can work on a bunch of these and really enjoy it put the water on it let it move around now and then, Sonia and I could talk to you like all day long about this and sit and just paint with you all day long now you have <laughs> some classes or you're going to be doing some classes like online or something with exactly. Thomas Dunn? We're creating a whole like YouTube channel for Thomas Dunn with some DIY videos on it. And it's linked to like anything where you're self teaching. So, so the videos are going to come out. This one was about me experimenting with the techniques I'm going to do in my video. Right. So for yeah. more, come to Thomas Dunn Learning Center's YouTube channel and we'll be putting up videos every month about like a class, you know, just like this. We'll experiment with this process and take it away in more depth. I love it. Thank you so much again, Sonia Day Slanker with Thomas Dunn Learning Center. Check out her YouTube channel with Thomas Dunn Learning Center. She, Tanya Day also has a really fun 
Um, if you'd like some peeks into Sonia Day's life, she does a really cool, uh, shares lots of fun things in her daily life. And, uh, and thank you so much for joining us, everyone. I'm Sonia Shin with A Beautiful Life, and we are so glad that you joined us and hope you have an amazing day. Have a beautiful day, everyone, with lots of art and, and de-stressing. <laughs> ah, it's dripping. <laughs> All right, everyone, take care. Thank you. <laughs>